Bruce, what can science say or not say about God, the existence of God, the importance of theology? Well, that's not a new question. It's built into the fabric of science and of scientific reasoning. And I can remember one quote from several centuries ago. Uh, our, holy faith, our holy church is based on faith, meaning the church of science is based upon the f faith that it is a mechanism that's reproducible in time and space. But we have no evidence of that. It's a faith. It's a belief. It's a convenient one. I happen to share it, but I wouldn't want to defend it in a court of law. So I think what's important for a scientist and for the public is to realize that we are humans, and scientific humans are no different than other humans. They have their own prejudice and shortcomings, and they tend to do, as I do, see things in the context that they're familiar with. Now, for physical science, that's not too bad. But when you start talking about things that involve humans, we tend to see things the same way. And that's been a source of a lot of trouble over the years. So I think that the humanity of science and the frailties of us humans is an important concept in evaluating scientific ideas. How about the way science thinks and the way religion thinks? Uh, how, how would you compare right. and contrast the two? Well, religion in most religions, certainly Western ones, is based on a faith. Faith in a God, faith on a certain revelation that certain truths, whether they be biblical or otherwise, are, are true. And that's where you start. You don't derive religion in that way. Uh, so to that extent, it's overtly faith-based. Science considers itself free of this, but that's not entirely correct. We try, but we are also human. And so it's hard for us to really scrub our minds free of human anthropomorphic assumptions. And having been guilty as charged, mm -hmm. I uh, want to emphasize that. And so it's important for scientists themselves, it's important for the general public that deals with scientific evidence and products to realize, hey, we're, we're human, we're just like everybody else, and we can be pre prejudiced, and we can make errors in judgment, and we can see things incompletely. Mm. On the other hand, we do have a, a technique, which is science itself, which is external to us to some extent. We may not understand the answers properly, but experimental methods controlled observations do provide a kind of information that you don't get by just imagining it. You don't get it by reading a sacred text. It comes from nature itself. But are there boundaries to science, impenetrable walls beyond which you cannot pass? I certainly think so. Again, it's not a provable statement. <laughs> if we knew the answer, we'd have the answer. But... Um, I certainly think there's so much in our own consciousness and our feelings, so much more than we realize, and we are so primitive compared to some future system that it's a little bit naive to suppose we can analyze ourselves, that we can understand ourselves well enough to realize it when it's prejudice, when it's incomplete thinking. So I always assume that we are very primitive, we're looking through the looking, looking glass darkly, and doing the best we can. And that's pretty good. I'm very pleased with it. But I certainly don't mistake that for any kind of perfection or completeness. Do you see that no matter how far science develops, that there will always be questions that science cannot answer, no matter how far you take science, no matter how far you emerge from the primitiveness and you evolve and science goes on for a billion years, will there will always be questions that science can't answer? Or will every question, one way or another, be subjected to science? Um, my hunch, there's no way to answer this mm -hmm. in a formal way, but my hunch is that we are very much a product of a certain paradigm, as the term goes, a certain way of looking at things. And I think there'll be new paradigms and new ways of looking at things, which will be broader and more sophisticated mm. than what we now mm. think of. 
and that's going to go on for a long time. So future groups will look back at this as we look at, at primitive societies with their mythologies, but they, you know, they ate the right foods. They did some things right, <laughs> or we wouldn't be here. But I think we're, it's, we're very early in the process, and as long as the process continues and nothing catastrophic happens, the future is unimaginably interesting.